breaking news. We now have major details on what is in the Brexit deal draft. A whole host of headlines have just hit the tape. They include, let me just tell you, a solution to the backstop that would prevent a hard border between Northern Ireland and Ireland. The deal says that a backstop arrangement would be temporary and that a more secure deal would need to be reached by December 31st of 2020. But as the world was waiting, as hours collapsed at 10 Downing Street in London, before Prime Minister Theresa May finally emerged after discussions with her cabinet, it appears that her cabinet has approved her Brexit deal. But guess what? That's only the beginning. Headline after headline, as we say, hitting the tape, screaming across this morning, though, before we got some details. These are Britain's newspapers and famed tabloids all weighing in on Prime Minister Theresa May's Brexit plan. Some of them love it. Some of them hate it. Look at this one from The Times. May accused of betrayal. Here's EU takes back control from the evening standard. But you know what? Let's clear through all of that and bring in, in a Fox Business exclusive from London, the former U.S. ambassador to the European Union, Anthony Gardner. OK, clear through this. She's got it passed from her cabinet. But that's, is that the first step of a marathon or a sprint? It categorizes for us. It's the first step of a marathon of many steps. So she's got to get approval also from the EU heads of state, which she will get. She's got to get approval from the European Parliament, which I think she would get. But the problem is that she needs to get approval from her own parliament and the electoral math, the math in the parliament is very tough. She's got a 13 seat working majority. She loses seven. She's got trouble. She has a coalition, as you know, with the Democratic Unionist Party, the Northern Ireland Party. If she loses 10, she's got trouble. Okay, wait, let me, uh, let me interrupt you there. Northern Ireland is part of the UK. They have this yeah. DUP, this, this group that really doesn't like most of what they've heard from Theresa May. Northern Ireland, how crucial could they be to derailing these positive headlines that we've seen where at least some countries, including Ireland, seem to think it's pretty decent? Well, cru crucial. So they vote against it. It's over. But I don't think they've had a chance really to look at the fine details of it yet. It was just released, I think, last night. It's a 400-page document, very detailed. So we don't know, I think, yet what their position will be. But if she loses the 10 votes, uh, it can't go through. But even worse, or just as bad, perhaps, if a significant number of Tories, her own party, abandon her and she can't compensate with uh, votes from Labour, she's also got a problem in terms of the math. So this is not over by any stretch. And the key issues you mentioned is the Northern Ireland issue. So apparently what the deal is here is that Northern Ireland will sign up to the EU customs code, all of the rules uh, on customs of the EU, and also the single market uh, rules, which would allow uh, no regulatory checks on goods uh, and means no tariffs and no quotas and no rules of origin. So that deals with the border there. In terms of the UK mainland, uh, they would sign up to a soft form of mm -hmm. customs union, a customs partnership, which would also get rid of a need for tariffs and quotas and rules of origin. But there, there would continue to be checks on uh, goods for the reason that they're not going to be but in the single market. Do you, do you um, think, so, do you think yes. Ambassador, that on balance, most of the European Union will look at this and say, Compromise. This works for us. Cecilia Malmstrom, right now, the European trade rep, is with our trade rep, uh, Robert Lighthizer, and she's also hitting the tape saying that they made some progress. She also said that she agrees with the U.S. on uh, how unfair China has been in their trade uh, deals with the, with the United States. So it almost seems like there's some softer talk, more of a, a carrot discussion versus a stick. Yes, well, I think the EU wants this deal to work with the UK. I think the problem is on the UK side about whether it will fly. On the larger issue about uh, the car import tariffs and so forth, um, you know, you're absolutely right. I think they're putting an emphasis appropriately that the US and the EU actually agree on a lot, mm -hmm. uh, particularly with regard to China. The uh, EU, for example, tabled a very specific document about how they would like to see the WTO rules changed. And we would probably agree with 90 percent of it. And it applies to China, state-owned enterprises, uh, forced you know, IP transfers, market access, and so forth. So they've been asking and in trying to engage the United States in a process okay. of WTO reform. 
as part of the deal that they struck in the White House with President Trump. The problem is, from what I understand, and I've been told by many people in the EU, so far there's been almost no engagement from the United States on those proposals. I quickly, uh, it, we're running out of time, but I do need to hear your thought on Italy's. <laughs> Somebody in our morning meeting said Italy's acting like the, the angry baby who's throwing toys out of the pram right now because they were supposed to resubmit a budget, which was absolutely unacceptable to the head of the European Union who's looking at budgets. They resubmitted it on the deadline with nearly no changes. Now, this is a, a coalition populist government, and they refuse to knock it off on spending. What do you think happens with Italy, the EU's third largest economy? This is a big deal. I don't think Italy is going to back down anytime soon or easily. Mm. And, and the main reason is domestic Italian politics. You've got two parties who want to be seen as tough, particularly one of them, uh, and they've made promises during the campaign, and they say, we're going to deliver on those promises, the minimum salary, we're going to reduce the pensionable age, okay. uh, and, and so forth. So I think we're going to see more turbulence with the EU, and we're going to see bond uh, spreads uh, uh, going up.